Hi, good evening all. So is how many students are there? Amit, Anuradha, only 20 students are there. Bharatwaj, Chetan. Yeah, good evening, Hita. So let's wait for two to three minutes, okay? I'll just add a message in the group, let all the students join. I'll just wait for two to three minutes. Good evening, Sri Devika. So, do you guys, uh, do you guys got anything to ask? You can ask me. Uh, let's wait for uh, three. Uh, let's start our class at five five. Okay. Uh, yes, okay, we'll start the class. So let's not waste the time. So I'm launching a technical poll here. Yes, sir, Sachin, good evening. See, uh, you can answer in the poll whether I'm audible clearly and is the presentation visible clearly. Yes, Pritam, 
गुड इवनिंग one person cannot see the presentation uh, so whoever facing the issue because i'm having a proper network now for now whoever facing the issue just check your internet connection once and also check the electronic device which you are using to the class Okay, I'm ending the poll because yes, maximum people have no issue. Ah, uh, yes, we will start the chapter, and most of you asked me ah uh, when we are going to start the eleventh syllabus, right? As uh, soon after completion of this chapter, we are going to start the eleventh syllabus. Ah, uh, okay. So yes, tell me what are the things we ah uh, we have studied in the previous class. Just tell me what are the things we have studied in the previous class. Hmm, the people can look cute. Ha, uh, while eleventh syllabus means a tharva, uh, we didn't complete the eleventh syllabus yet. Uh, still the plant physiology and human physiology is left to complete. So for the neat aspect, we need to complete that. That's why. Oh uh, yes, very good. Gynaecium about pollen grain, structure of pollen grain. Yes. So in the previous class, what we have studied is that, ha, huh, microsporogenesis. Ah, uh, the complete male reproductive system and the female reproductive system, and from the male reproductive system, pollen grain has been arised, and the female reproductive system we have studied where the egg is going to be, ah, uh, formed. How the The embryo sac is formed, and inside the embryo sac, how the egg is going to be formed. That is all the thing we have seen. But how this pollen grain reaches up to the egg? That is what the question, right? So that we will see in today's class. Before that, I would like to ask you a question, and the question is: Yes, a typical angiosperm anther is dithecus, which means that it is. One lobe and the lobe has two theca. Two lobe and each lobe has two theca. Two lobe and each lobe has one theca, and four lobe and each lobe has two theca. Yes. Uh, here is your poll. Yes, you can answer the poll. Hmm. Nitesh, you correct. Amit, yes. अदरवानो एस मोनिशा करेक्ट और यस लिपिका चेतना You got ten seconds to answer. Hmm. Yes, Sita. Okay, I'm ending the poll here. Ah, uh, yes, Lekita. And the results are like this: twenty-one percent of the people have chosen option A, fifty-five percent of the people have chosen option B. Twenty-one percent of the people have chosen option C, and only three percent people choose option D. And why you guys choose option D? Okay, C. Ah, uh, if you see the structure of anther, ah, uh, there is a something like this. Not exactly, but something like this, right? So now, how many lobes you can see here in the anther? How many lobes you can see? Answer me. Is answer me how many lobes you can see there? Yes, right. So two lobes. This is a one lobe, and this is a another lobe. 
and each loop contains how many theca yes each loop contains how many theca yes two this is a one this is a two in one loop and this is a one and this is a second one in the other so finally a typical angiospermic anther is going to have two lobes four theca which means uh, two theca in each lobe yes so if there are two lobes you cannot choose option 1 option 4 at all because there are only two lobes and each lobe is having two theca that's why you can't choose option c option b is correct right and the pistil of papaver is monocarpellary multicarpellary apocarpus multicarpellary syncarpus and absent so can anyone tell me i mean just answer in the poll what kind of pistil you can see or is, is there a pistil if there is a pistil what kind of pistil monocarpellary or bicarpellary if bicarpellary which kind of bicarpellary oh i'm getting answers we'll see Yes, most of you giving the correct answers in the chat box, even in the poll. Yes, what about the people from YouTube? Can't you guys hear me? Yes. Uh, why Atharva? See, this is what uh, the result. Fifteen percent of the people have chosen option A. Twenty-five percent of the people have chosen option B. Sixty percent of the people have chosen option C, and nobody have chosen option D. Okay. Yes. So the pistil of the papaver. If you guys are able to remember the last class images that I have showed you, so yes. Uh, the papaver is the example for the multicarpellary, which means that is having a more than one pistil. You here you can see the pink colored one. No, those are the carpels. I mean, those are the pistils. So you cannot choose the monocarpellary. And yes, there is a pistil, so you can't choose the absent. So uh, you have got two options: multicarpellary apocarpus and multicarpellary syncarpus. Uh, so most of you have told that uh, there is a confusion between apocarpus and syncarpus. So you can clear now, right? So multicarpellary apocarpus, where the pistils are free, but the multicarpellary syncarpus, where the pistils are fused. But here in this image, you can see the pistils are fused. That is why the correct option is that multicarpellary syncarpus. Oh, I have uh, tenth failed. I am Atharva. Okay. <laughs> See, this is all about this, and now we will see. In the by the previous class, we have already seen that uh, what we have seen how the pollen grain is going to be formed and how the egg is going to be formed. So, in today's class, how that pollen grain will go and reach the pistil, that we will see in today's class. Okay, so that process is called as pollination. So pollination means what? Finally, it is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of a pistil. That is called as the pollination. Understood? Pollination means what? It is the transfer of pollen grain from the anther to the stigma of a pistil. That is what called pollination. Ah, uh, do you guys understand? But this pollination, this is very easy. In the most of your lower classes, you might have studied this, right? Yes or no? So if you want to understand this, say yes. Oh, yes, Sachin. Here are yes, Sachin. The emojis. Ah, oh, yes, Chandana. Very good. So, okay. Now we will see what kind of pollination. So pollination means just transferring of 
uh, pollen grain from the anther to the stigma. Anther is a male reproductive part, stigma is a female reproductive part. So, this anther, I mean this pollen grain of the anther is moving from anther to the stigma of the same flower or the different flower or the different plant. Based on that, we will see. Uh, full screen is not visible, is it? Is the chat box and my video blocking something? No, I cannot see that. In the YouTube, it is not. See, everything is visible. Harsha, just check your uh, connection. It's clear. Okay, Harsha, just check your connection once. Most probably, uh, you might have uh, got the less connection, internet connection. Okay. Uh, see, based on that, uh, from which flower, how the pollen grains are transferring of the same flower or from the different flower of same plant or from the different plant, based on that, we have three types. So, you can observe in the image A, B, C. Right. What do you mean by that A, B, C? A is an autogamy, B is a genogamy, C is a xenogamy. What are those? First of all, we will see here. So, autogamy. Auto means self. Gamy means marriage. Right? Auto, self, gamy, marriage. Which means, yes, the pollen grain from the anther moves to the stigma of the same flower. If there is a one flower, so uh, this flower is having stigma and anthers. So, the anther produces the pollen grain. And that is going to release the pollen grain on the stigma directly. Uh, yes, you can say pollination, you can say uh, marriage. In a Greek, gamy means a marriage. Okay, so that is what autogamy. Autogamy means transfer of pollen grain from the anther to the stigma of the stay of the same flower. That is what called autogamy. Autogamy can also called as self-pollination because here the pollination is taking place in the same flower. Right? That is what called autogamy or self-pollination. Uh, and I will tell you there are some adaptations to that autogamy. I will tell you. But for now, you need to know what is autogamy. Uh, is that clear what is autogamy? Is that clear to everyone? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So next is that jitinogamy. Jitinogamy means transfer of pollen grain from the anther of the flower to the stigma of the female flower or stigma of the other flower of same plant. You can see here. This is a plant one. This is a plan two. So here, the, uh, there is a pollen grain is formed from the anther and that is going to reach the stigma of the other flower. But those both flowers are in the same plant. Right. So this is what called jitinogamy. This comes under the cross pollination because the pollination is taking place between the two different flowers of the same plant. Okay. And third one is that is xenogamy. Xenogamy, what happens here? Here the pollen grain transfers from one flower of a one plant to the other flower of the other plant. This is what the xenogamy. This is what exact the cross-pollination uh, where the genetic recombination takes place because one plant is having a different genetic makeup, another plant is having different genetic makeup, right? When they both combine then you can get the, uh, another genetic makeup or another new plant which is having a different genetic makeup. So understand, autogamy, where the pollination takes place uh, within the pollen, I mean within the anther, I mean transfer of uh, pollen from the anther uh, to the stigma of the same flower. Zitinogamy, transfer of pollen grain from the anther to the pistil of the different flower of same plant. Same plant having two flowers 
and those between those two flowers pollination takes place called zygomatic and zygomatic yes the pollen grain is going to transfer from one plant to the another plant yes this is this clear everyone click on yes if it is clear yes very good very good most of you are saying yes super so this is very clear right you guys uh, don't get any confusion here i guess so now we will see how the autogamy let me just read the points that's it uh, this is very easy so far what i have told that is there in this so it is a transfer pollen grain from the anther to the stigma of the same flower that is what called autogamy in the flowers with exposed anther and stigma complete auto autogamy is rare so there are some flowers in that flowers what happens or uh, the stigma and the uh, anthers are exposed if they are exposed means what happens there are chances of cross pollination uh, which means see if this is a flower and here is a stigma okay if the wind current or or i can say that if the air is passing over here if the air is passing here then what happens oh okay okay sanika i'll tell you one minute okay so if the air is passing here uh, and air contains uh, most of the other pollen grains right and there are chances of cross pollination uh, by that air so if any flower uh, which is having the exposed anthers and uh, stem uh, stigma then there are chances very rare chances of autogamy okay so to avoid that what happens the flowers are always in a closed most of the self pollinated flowers are always closed and there are some self pollinated flowers which are open but what do they do means they mature which means the pollen releases and the stigma got the receptivity receptivity means which have a capacity to hold the pollen grain that is what called a receptivity okay so at that condition when there is a open flower at that condition what happens the pollen releases and the stigma receptivity both take place at the same time so that there are high chances of self pollination so if the if there is a flower from this flower the pollen grain has been released right if the pollen grain has been released at the same time the stigma got the receptivity then the pollen grain go and sit on the stigma that gives the self pollination right so uh, that that is how the plant adapt itself for the self pollination okay so that autogamy is in such flowers requires a synchrony in pollen release and stigma receptivity okay and a uh, one minute jagan and one more thing anther and stigma they always uh, place together i mean they are always together mm if a pollen goes to ma'am if a pollen goes to the stigma of a different that is the cross pollination if the pollen goes to the stigma of a other flower that is a cross pollination if that is taking place in the same flower then only that's a self pollination okay so this autogamy is taking place in the same flower one flower having both uh, anther and stigma their pollination is taking place that is what the autogamy or the self pollination so do you understand now autogamy is also called as self pollination which is going to takes place inside the same flower okay and there are some adaptations like a synchrony in pollen release and receptivity or oh, third point monisha okay synchrony in the pollen release and stigma receptivity which means pollen releases at the same time the stigma got the receptivity receptivity means to hold the pollen grain once it holds the pollen grain then the pollen tube will get uh, released i mean the pollen tube will get emerged right so to avoid the cross pollination in the autogamy flowers or in the self pollinated flowers uh, there is a synchronization between a pollen release and stigma receptivity which means the both things happen at the same time okay and to transfer the pollen grain very easily 
the anther and stigma they are close together that's it understand jagan monisha uh say okay yes so next we will see about some flowers so here you can see there are different flowers yes okay there are different kinds of flowers you can see here and so yes how the flowers are going to be adapt themselves we will see so first one is that the chasmogamous flowers so chasmogamous flowers means what the flowers which are larger and brightly colored larger brightly colored and having exposed anther and stigma so why the flowers have modified like this because to encourage the cross pollination they always encourage the cross pollination right that kind of flowers we will call as the chasmogamous flowers so chasmogamous flowers which are larger brightly colored and they always encourage the cross pollination okay larger and open flowers they always open right and there is another type of uh, here you can see the beautiful flowers which are example for chasmogamous flowers and subularia aquatica this is also one of the clistogamous flower so clistogamous are the another type of flowers where they are small closed and not brightly colored not brightly colored why because they always encourage the self pollination they always increase the self pollination okay so this is uh, these are the types of flowers so so far what we have studied we have just studied the autogamy only so autogamy means the flowers which always encourage the self pollination or you can also say the clistogamous flowers so not only the clistogamous flowers and there are some other flowers called the chasmogamous flowers the flowers which encourage the self pollination are called clistogamous the flowers which encourage the cross pollination by having a brightly colored petals are called chasmogamous flowers so chas uh, chasmogamous flowers show which kind of pollination i'll tell you okay so do you understand chasmogamous flowers clistogamous flowers so now we will see study the gytnogamy Okay, now we will study the gytnogamy. Yes, the YouTube people have gave you answers, but I don't know. I didn't get the answer. Now I am getting all the answers. Oh, Shubhash, Gopika, Ashwini, yes, Ashwin. Sorry, good evening all. Ha, uh, yes. Now gytnogamy. Gytnogamy we know already. It is a uh, so monisha and harsha you guys are asking me something uh, harsha did you understand the concept which type of flower is advantage no uh, both the self pollination and cross pollination have their uh, different advantages and disadvantages both like it okay next is that gytnogamous flowers gytnogamous flowers means yes the pollination is taking place which means transfer of pollen grain from the anther to the stigma of a different flower of the same plant if there is the same plant in the same plant there are two different flowers so from one flower to the another flower anther is going to be transferred to the stigma 
that is what called gitinogamy but functionally it is a cross pollination right because the pollination is taking place uh, between the two different flowers do you agree functionally it is a cross pollination but it is genetically similar to autogamy uh, how many people will agree for this do you agree or not if you agree say yes otherwise no if you don't understand the line say didn't understand okay most of you are agreeing ha yes it is a functionally cross pollination because the pollination is taking place between the two flowers that is what called cross pollination but the two flowers belongs to the same plant yes the two flowers belongs to the same plant then there is no uh, genetic variation right but there is no genetic variation that is the main reason it is uh, genetically similar to autogamy in the autogamy what happens the pollination takes place between the uh, anther and stigma of a same flower so there is no genetically variations here in the autogamy also sorry here in the gitinogamy also the pollination is taking place between the two flowers of the same plant that is why here also there is no genetic variation at all so genetically similar to the autogamy gitinogamy is genetically similar to the autogamy since the pollen grains come from the same plant understand next is the xenogamy xenogamy means it is the or uh, are the flowers in gitinogamy is unisexual or uh, it depends they can be unisexual or they can be bisexual like it so next is a xenogamy xenogamy means it is the transfer of pollen grain from the anther to the stigma of a different plant this is what called xenogamy okay and here uh, the transfer is taking place between the two different plants right that is why here you can see the genetic variation it brings a genetically different pollen grains to the stigma do you understand in the autogamy in the gitinogamy you cannot find the genetic variation but in the xenogamy you can find the genetic variation why because uh, the pollinating agent or pollinating agent is going to bring the different genetically different pollen grain to the stigma right that is the main reason do you understand autogamy gitinogamy xenogamy and two types of flowers uh, chasmogamous flowers cristogamous flowers understand yes or no click on yes if you understand hmm yes okay no need to explain again i guess harsha is pallavi okay so you can unclick now yes if you understand let me ask you a question then uh the only type of pollination that brings a genetically different types of pollinate i mean pollen grains to the stigma is the only type of pollination that brings a genetically different type of pollinate uh, pollen grains to the stigma is chasmogamy cleistogamy gitinogamy xenogamy hmm. one minute chetan chetana yes you can answer in the poll here is a poll same kind same kind chetana same kind yes most of you are giving correct answers very good is the people from youtube also i'm expecting
Yes, Anu, Anu, correct. I'm ending the poll. Let me share the results with you. See, five percent of you have chosen option A. Five percent of you have chosen option B. Eight percent of you have chosen option C. And eighty-two percent of the people have chosen option D. Okay. Let me stop share the results. See, the only type of pollination that brings a genetically different type of pollen grain. See, chasmogamy and the clistogamy. They are the flowers. You cannot choose that. And gitinogamy, which brings the similar type of pollen grain. Ah, uh, even though they are different flowers, but they are coming from same plant. That is why you can't choose this. and xenogamy where the pollination takes place between the two different plants okay understand so now we are seeing the agents of pollination okay Oh yes. See, I told you the movement of pollen grain from the anther to the stigma. How it is moving? How it is moving? What the way of moving? Is there any carrier? Is there any transport? Whatever it is, right? What what is that? There is. There are some transporters. There are some vehicles. There are some agents. Those are all called agents of pollination. Okay, that we will see now. So, what are all the agents of pollination? Abiotic agents and biotic agents. So, the agent which does not have the um, ha sanica. Sorry, allogamy means the exact the xenogamy. Okay, xenogamy you can also say the allogamy where the genetic recombination takes place. Okay, sanica. so abiotic agents where the pollinating agents does not have the life which means the those are called as abiotic agent okay biotic agents the pollinating agents which have life and they are helpful for the pollination those are insects birds bats primates arboreal rodents reptiles so many we'll see one by one first one is that wind okay so how wind is going to be helpful for the pollination that we will study okay so before that uh, can anyone tell me uh, the wind pollination can also called as what the wind pollination can also called as what yes nobody answering why wind pollination can also called as what don't know say at least if you don't know say don't know Yes, giant correct. This can also called as uh, anemophily. Yes, Surabi correct. Zappi okay. Lohit correct. So, ah, uh, if the pollination is taking place by the wind, that is called as the anemophily. Yes, ah, uh, most of the plants will show the. wind pollination so what are the characters of that plant so if the plant is uh, should undergo the pollination by the wind what are the characters that plant should have the first one is that the pollen grains should be light pollen grains should be light weight yes uh, why because uh, if the pollen grains are heavy They cannot travel along with the air, 
right that is the main reason why the pollen grain should be light in weight that is the first character of the plant and the second one is that pollen grains are no, non sticky pollen grains are non sticky uh, why they are non sticky because if the pollen uh, yes the pollen grains are moving along with the air if the air is moving along with the air the pollen grains will also move right uh if any object interrupts like a wall or like a big tree or any object right because air can move everywhere anywhere if any object that uh obstructs that what happens then if the pollen grains are sticky the pollen grains will go and hit that object and they are going to stuck there right that is the main reason why the pollen grains are non sticky if the pollen grains are sticky they are going to stuck that object then the actual female plant is not female flower is not going to get the pollen grain if the pollen grains are sticky that is why pollen grains are non sticky in the wind pollination okay and one more thing stamens are well exposed stamens are well exposed what do you mean by this so stamens are well exposed because if there is a flower and stamens are inside the flower if for the stamens are inside the flower they cannot exposed then what happens the air is moving above the flower right the air will move above the flower or a small amount of air will come into the flower then that air is not enough that wind is not enough to carry the pollen grains that is the main reason why the stamens are well exposed they are uh, very much exposed like this see if this is a stamen this is a flower the stamens are exposed in this manner so that they can easily expose to the uh, air and the air uh, air current can take out the pollen grains right that is the main reason why the stamens are well exposed to the air and also the stigma stigma is a large and feathery large and feathery stigma okay yes why the stigma is large and feathery again the same why it is large because if the stigma is inside the flower the air is moving above the flower then the stigma cannot get the pollen grains um a uh, one minute chat and let me complete this and i'll come to a question okay so if the stigma is inside the flower the air is moving above the flower right so then it cannot come inside so along with the air the pollen grains move about the flower then there is no pollination so that is the main reason why the stigma is large and why it is feathery because the pollen grains are non sticky if they just hit the flower they're not going to stuck to that flower that is why the uh, the stigma is a feathery so that in the feathers the pollen grain can stuck that is the main reason okay or uh, can we say there is a less chance of pollination by wind because we can't say that pollen bought by air will fall 100% on the flower only yes you are absolutely correct chetana uh, because there are no 100% of chances the air can Uh, go any direction right if in that direction if there is a flower and that is also in the proper height then only the flower will get the pollen grain otherwise it will not get so there are very less chances by the uh, what i can say there are very less chances takes place by the wind pollination but yes there are chances there are also some chances uh, which can pollinate by the wind the best example is that a corn here you can see in the image so the feather like structures the hair like structures what you can see in the corn the maize those are actually the feathery stigma okay and the male flowers are at the top at the top you can see the tessels no uh, those tessels will having the male flowers from the male flowers the pollens are going to transfer to the female flowers where the hair like structure is present no Uh, from that the complete corn will grow after the pollination yes is that clear wind pollination yes 
Click on yes if it is clear. Yes. Okay, very good. Okay, you can unclick now. So now is a abiotic agent. Yes. Another abiotic agent. What is that? That is a water. Okay. So this you will call as if the pollination is taking place by the water, that you will call as hydrophily. Yes, that is called as hydrophily. So approximately, approximately 30 genera, not the species, okay, 30 genera, approximately 30 genera are going to uh, pollinate by the water. And if you are able to observe the ocean life in the National Geography or in the Discovery Channels, there you can see most of the plants which are present inside the water are at the surface of the water, right? So those are all going to pollinate with the help of this, I mean with the help of water. So but uh, there are different kinds of plants, right? Uh, so some plants which are at the surface of the water, genera, I'm saying, oh, you don't know what is a genera, likita, sorry, likit. Genus, species, do you heard about a genus and species? In the 11th standard, the first chapter taught you this. Yes, genus can also call the genera, okay? Yes, uh, in the aquatic system, we can find the two types of plants. So some plants which are at the surface of the water and some plants which are at the, uh, they can say, yes, uh, some plants which are at the bottom of the water. So there are two different uh, kinds of pollination takes place, varieties of pollination. So first one is that, I can say, the stigma reach the surface of water. In the female plant, the stigma reach the surface of water first. Okay, then what happens? Male plant or anther release stigma. Sorry, sorry, sorry. One minute. Not the stigma, okay? Releases pollen grain to surface of water. To the surface of water. So this is a one condition. Uh, there is a stigma at the, so this is a stigma and this is an anther, okay? So this is an anther, this is a stigma. So now the anther is releasing the pollen grain which is at the surface, even the stigma, which is at the surface of the water. So now it releases the pollen grain and the water will move like this. Along with the water, the stigma, pollen grains also move and touch the stigma. Pollination takes place. This is a one type. And there are uh, some other plants which are in the bottom. Yes, which are at the bottom. So how the takes place, how it takes place. So the male plant release pollen grain inside the water. Okay, so if the plant is inside the water, then the male plant releases the pollen grain inside the water. Then the female plant Uh, also present inside the water. No, no, stigma is not motile, Monisha. Female plant is also present in the In the water. 
Okay, so now if the both the plants, male plant and female plant, both are inside the water, then the male plant releases the pollen grain inside the water along with the water current. The pollen grain move towards the pistil, which is uh, present inside the water itself. Then pollination will takes place. And one more important thing you need to study here. I mean, you need to know here is pollen grain covers with mucilage layer with mucilage layer okay why the pollen grain is covers with a mucilage layer because the mucilage layer are uh, not allows the pollen grain to wet if the pollen grain becomes a wet then the pollen grain becomes heavy then it cannot move along with the water current right that is the main reason why the pollen grain uh, in the plants uh, which are going to pollinate by the water is going to have the mucilage cover and the examples are you can see in the image right can you guys able to see the image valesinaria hydrilla and zostera these are all the examples so do you understand how the abiotic pollination i mean how the abiotic agents help in the pollination do you guys understand Yes. Okay. Pratiksha is saying yes. So next, here is the question. So the aquatic plant in which pollination is not carried out by, in which of the aquatic plant the pollination is not carried? Valesinaria, water lily, zoostera, hydrilla. Yes, Atharva correct. Amit, no. Anuradha, yes, correct. Ha, yes, Amit, now you are correct. Yes, time up and I'm ending the poll and results are like this. Okay, Anu gave the answer correct. 7% of the people have chosen option A, 57% of the people have chosen option B, 29% of the people have chosen option C and 7% of the people have chosen option D. Stop sharing the results. See, in the previous image only you can see. Uh, Valesneria, Hydrilla and Zustera. These three plants are going to uh, pollinate with the help of water, not the water lily. Okay. Yes, now comes the biotic agents. How the biotic agents are going to be helpful for the pollination. Okay. Oh, wait, let me just move this okay so if the pollination is taking place by the animals that is called as anemophily if the pollination is taking place by the animals that is called as anemophily and most of the plants majority of the flowering plants are going to depend on the animals for their pollination the examples what are kind what are all the kinds of uh, animals are bees butterflies yes, bees butterflies flies beetles uh, what is by called ma'am what is by called i didn't get you sachin and bass 
and moths birds like a sunbird how does pollination take place in ah uh, yes, yes yes i'll tell you anu very good question wind pollination oh wind pollination is a anemophily anemophily anu i'll come to you one minute okay sunbird and hummingbird uh, those both are the birds which are helpful in the pollination even the bats primates like a lemurs arboreal rodents and the reptiles like a gecko lizard and the garden lizard ah no no atarva this chapter is not going to finish we are going to finish only about the pollination and we need to study about the fertilization and post fertilization events most probably it takes by the end of the month we we'll try to take uh mostly from uh, next week gazala ma'am will handle your classes okay so if the pollination is taking place by the insects that is what called uh, entomophily okay that is what called entomophily particularly bees are more common okay particularly honey bees are the most common one which are helpful for the pollination and is often flowers of animal pollinated plants are specially adapted for a particular species of animals which means if the flower uh, is depending on the particular are, sorry if the flower is depending on the particular animal then the flower is going to modify itself uh, to comfort that animal because if the honey bee is uh, visiting that flower which means the flower has to modify always honey bee is visiting which means uh, that flower has to give some uh, protection or something it should be adapted the flower has to adapt itself for the thing okay for that animal and the next comes the features of the insect pollinated flower so so far we have studied the features of uh, wind pollinated flowers and the water pollinated flowers isn't it so now we will see the features of insect pollinated flowers which are flowers are always large colorful fragrant and rich in nectar why because if they are large only then the uh, insects can see the flowers enough right and they are very colorful to attract and even the fragrance is also to attract the insects not to attract the humans and to rich in a nectar uh, the flowers which are depend on the animals or the insects especially for the pollination then they produce the most of the nectar nectar and pollen grains are the floral rewards for the pollination yes and small flowers from from the inflorescence to make them make them visible which means if the flowers are small uh, then the insects cannot see them right then what happens then the flowers all together forms the inflorescence then what happens the insects can easily see that inflorescence most of the flowers together forms the inflorescence and especially the flowers which are pollinated by the flies and the beetles they secrete the foul odor why because the foul odor is so attractive to the flies and beetles that is the main purpose why some of the flowers will produce the foul odors you can or you might have observed there are some flowers which produce a very bad smell because of the flies and the beetles okay and the pollen grains in the insect pollinated flowers or the pollen grains in the entomophilus flowers they are sticky whereas in the hydrophily and anemophily, uh, anemophily pollen grains are non sticky but here it is sticky because once the insect come and sit on the flower then if the pollen grains are sticky the pollen grains are going to stick all over the legs and body of that insect that is why the pollen grains are sticky once it sticks to that insect and that insect visit the other female flower then all the pollen grains are going to drop on the female flower 
that is the main uh, feature we can see yes features especially you have to write large colorful fragrant and rich in nectar and one more thing uh, pollen grains are sticky and the, uh, some of the flowers will produce a flies uh, sorry foul odor for the flies and beetles okay and and there are some flowers which provide a shelter or the safe place to the uh, insect that is the main reason why the insects come not only for the nectar not only for the other purpose okay some insects will come to the flowers to lay the eggs because they feel the place is a safe okay uh, the best example is that amarphophyllus flower which is a very tall flower or tallest flower we can say 6 feet height more than my height i guess okay that is what amarphophyllus flower which can also give the safe place to lay the eggs and uh, i can tell you one uh, example okay there is a plant called eka plant there the second image you can see you no know, in the in your screen that is a eka plant this eka plant and the uh, one type of moth have the they both have relationship how means if the moth is not there eka plant cannot complete its life cycle if the eka plant is not there the moth cannot complete its life cycle that is how they both are uh, related to each other how means the moth will come to the eka plant flower to lay the eggs by laying the eggs that moth is going to pollinate the eka plant right so this is how and those eggs which are laid in the eka plant later they get convert as a larva this is how they both got interact each other yes do you understand so this is all about the uh this is all about insect pollinated flowers how the insect pollinated flowers are uh, modify themselves by having a large flowers colorful fragrant and rich in nectar and also they form a inflorescence so that they can easily visible to the insects right and the pollen grains are sticky Uh, about the eka once again i'll tell you and uh, some flowers like amarphophyllus flowers they provide a safe place to they to lay the eggs to the insects that is why they visit that by visiting they will also help the plant uh, for the pollination and here is one thing moth species and the eka plant they both have a relationship how means uh if the moth species uh yeah if the moth species does not there the eka plant cannot live because moth species is the only species of which helpful for the pollination to that eka plant and eka plant is the only species which gives the shelter to the moth species eggs that is why the moth species uh, will lay the eggs in eka plant and that pollinates the eka plant again so that is how vice versa they both are related to each other understand if you have any doubts ask me is any doubt so here anu anu you have asked me a doubt right how the uh, sorry this water lily is going to pollinate the water lily is going to pollinate with the help of a wind okay yes so any doubts uh, do you got any doubts okay here i got a doubt ha yes like it there are different uh, species there are different plants for the 
uh, anemophily there are different plants for the hydrophily there are different plants for the biotic agents different plants adapt differently depending on their adaptations okay likit yeah thank you so now we will see this pollen robbers so what do you mean by pollen robbers or the nectar robbers means so the insects visit okay insects uh, visit to the flowers to have the nectar or be, because of the bright colors or because of the fragrance they reach the flower after reaching the flower they'll get the some pollen grains right so those pollen grains uh, what do they do one minute uh, what do they do means those pollen grains are going to be consumed by the pollinators or consumed by the insects and that kind of insects are called as pollen robbers oh pratiksha moon ma'am both wind and animal pollination oh no sorry 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 i told you ah this is not anemophily sorry okay this is a zoophily this is zoophily sorry thank you friends thank you very much pratiksha and let me tell you few more and if the pollination is taking place by the birds that is called ornithophily okay and if the pollination is taking place by the bats that is what called chiraptanophily okay and if the pollination is taking place by the snails called as malacophily malacophily okay so this is all about the pollination the types of pollination and the agents of pollination so do you guys got any doubts here so if you got doubts you can ask me if it is clear or click on yes so that the last topic is remaining and by explaining that i'll wind up the class today if everything is clear click on yes if you got any doubts ask me ha huh, yes pollen grain that is called pollen grain variability likhit uh pollen grains have the variability which means in, dif in different plants different uh, time of variability is there uh if you take the grains they have a 30 minutes or oh sorry 30 days of viability and in some plants they are months together they have viability that depends on the time period okay is yes, they have time period for the fertilization very good like yes you guys can unclick now the last topic is that outbreeding so what do you mean by outbreeding then uh, there are some flowers yes uh, there are some flowers which are going to adapt for the cross pollination and there are some uh, bisexual flowers only you can take there are some bisexual flowers they supposed to undergo the self pollination right they supposed to undergo self pollination but to avoid that to sorry to avoid the self pollination what happens uh, the plant develops some devices or the plant develops some techniques to avoid the self pollination why it is avoiding a self pollination because the self continuous self pollination for the many generations that leads to the inbreeding depression 
okay inbreeding depression means uh, the same characters or the recessive there are chances of expression of recessive characters and all that is the main purpose why the plants are going to uh, avoid the self pollination so to avoid the self pollination the plants adapt some techniques what are those techniques let me write okay so and you know what is a uh, outbreeding already you can say that outbreeding or outcrossing both are the same okay first how they are going to be incompatible because um, incompatible means i mean uh, they are going to uh, what i can say they are going to avoid the self pollination means first one is that incompatibility incompatibility means what if the pistil is getting the pollen grain of the same plant if the pistil is getting the pollen grain of the same plant then the pistil does not allow the pollen grain of that pollen grain to germinate okay the pistil does not allow the pollen grain to germinate that is what called self incompatibility i can write here the self self incompatibility okay self incompatibility and second one is that non synchronization non synchronization between pollen germination ha huh, yes i'll tell you one minute between pollen germination and stigma i will write stigma right yes between the pollen germination and stigma receptivity so uh, how the plant is going to avoid the self pollination receptivity uh, how it is going to avoid means see if the pollen grain is germinating then uh, the stigma is not going to be receptible at that uh, at that time if the pollen grain and the stigma are receptive at the same time then there are chances of self fertilization right or self pollination so to avoid that pollen grain is going to germinate or pollen grain releases i can write this as release okay the pollen grain is going to release at a one time and the stigma is going to get its receptivity at the another time so that there are very less chances of self pollination so self incompatibility means what if there is a stigma okay if there is a stigma and there is a pollen grain of the same plant which lands which come and sit on the stigma then uh the stigma will identify the genetic makeup once the stigma identify the genetic makeup and the genetic makeup is same then the stigma is not going to allow the pollen grain to germinate inside the stigma understand tejeshwini and there are another chance the plant only produces a unisexual flower there is that is also one of the self incompatibility i mean sorry that is also one of the outbreeding technique unisexual flower okay so this is all about the outbreeding any doubts you got any doubts here one self incompatibility second one non synchronization between a pollen release and stigma receptivity third one is that unisexual flower so so tell me any doubts or do you guys understand third one unisexual flower that is just so if the plant doesn't want the uh, self fertilization then the plant produces only only unisexual flower so that self fertilization will not take place right i mean self pollination will not take place understand yes or no quickly yes 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 okay so that we'll take up for two questions and we'll wind up okay 
and here you can see oh first point monisha see self incompatibility is very easy monisha if there is a flower and that flower is containing the stigma on that stigma pollen grain will come and sit right if that pollen grain is of having different genetic makeup then only the pollen grain successfully germinate if the pollen grain is having the same genetic makeup of that stigma then that is not going to allow for the uh, pollen germination that's it understood monisha okay see here you can see the plants uh, castor which is going to produce i mean which is having a self incompatibility when the maize produces a non synchronization between a pollen release and stigma receptivity uh, whereas the papaya produces a different male and female plants okay so uh, let me ask you a question genetic self incompatibility tends to increase pollen dis uh, pollen dispersal in breeding pollination outcrossing what is the correct option ah no chandana yes harsha Oh no, Atharva. Check your answers, Chandana Atharva. Hmm, no Chetana. Okay. Trishala, correct. Very good. Hita, correct. Oh, I didn't get the answers from YouTube. Anuradha, yes. Oh, I at least require fifty percent of voting in the poll. I'll wait till I get a fifty percent. Okay, I'm ending the poll. Ah, uh, no, Chetana. The results are like this: eleven percent of the people have chosen option A, eighteen percent of the people have chosen option B, and seven percent of the people have chosen option C, and sixty-four percent of the people have chosen option D. Correct. C. Genetic self incompatibility. That is the main technique for the outbreeding or outcrossing, right? That tend to increase the outcrossing. Which means that tend to increase the cross pollination. Okay. Yes. Next is that asseration and reasoning type. Or do you guys know this? This kind of questions. Have you ever gone through this kind of questions? Yes. So, so that you can answer me, right? First, what is uh, first and foremost thing? What you need to do is first read the assertion and analyze whether it is a correct or wrong, right? Second, same, read the reason and analyze whether the reason is correct or wrong. So, first point you need to do is that read the assertion and reason carefully and see that they both are true or not. Once the both are true. then second you need to observe that whether the reason they have they are giving here is related to the i mean related or the is that exact reason for that assertion or not that you need to see okay so the embryo sac is seven cell seven nucleated structure is that true all cells are haploid in the embryo sac is that true 
if they are wrong okay if they are true uh, is the reason is correct explanation for that or not you need to tell so option a is that if the both asseration and reason are the true and the reason is correct explanation for the asseration option b if the asseration and reason are true but the reason is not correct explanation for the asseration if the reason is true uh, but the reason is false sorry if the asseration is true but the reason is false if both asseration and reason are false so what is the correct option choose now yes 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 super ah uh, hita correct amit no Uh, Pratiksha, yes. Monisha, yes. Jain, yes. No, Hita. Play Hita without any initial. Oh, Likita, yes. Likit is correct. I'm ending the poll, and the results like this. A variety of results. I mean, the diversification in the results. Fourteen percent option A, twenty-five percent choose option B, fourteen percent option C, and forty-six choose option D. Okay, I'm stop sharing the results. See, the embryo sac is seven-celled, eight nucleated stage, not the seven nucleated stage. So, asseration is true. If the asseration is itself true, you cannot choose option A, B, C because all the three options are saying asseration is true, but that is wrong. So option D is correct because all the cells are haploid. No. So if you take the embryo sac, the upper three cells are haploid, the lower three cells are haploid, but the complete cell you take. Which is having a two nucleus, which is a diploid, right? So all the cells are not haploid, and the embryo sac is not having only seven cells and only uh, seven nucleus. It is having seven cells, eight nucleus. Understand? Understood how to solve this? So, like in that case, I'm going to give you a homework. You need to solve this for me uh, for tomorrow. Chasmogamous flowers require a pollinating agent. Uh, clistogamous flowers do not expose their sex organs so yes what is the answer you need to tell me by tomorrow's class okay yes i'm launching a technical poll so teacher nps answer in the poll after answering you can leave for the day so if you got any doubts you can ask me Yeah, sure, Jen. Yes, I'll send you in the group. Just give me a fifteen minutes after the class. Thank you, Anuradha. Hmm. Yes. Give me the answer tomorrow. I'll expect hundred percent answers tomorrow. We'll see. Thank you, Sri Devi. Thank you, Pallavi. Look, it will discuss tomorrow. Yeah, Pratiksha. Thank you.
थैंक यू लिखित थैंक यू रिता so okay i'm ending the poll thank you i'm ending the class 2